Hello and welcome. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to create a Jupyter Notebook on AWS the easy way. Yes, there is a very traditional, tedious way of doing it, and there is a much, much easier way. Uh, what is a Jupyter Notebook? It looks just like this. It is a development environment that's entirely browser-based, so you can write your code right here in the browser, run it, and it gives you the option to run code snippets in, in cells. It's awesome. If you're not sure what it is, go ahead and look it up, watch some videos on it, and you'll see the real power behind it. So here is the AWS console. A lot of services, a lot of things to do. The traditional way to spin up a Jupyter Notebook and have it hosted on AWS where you can always access it is to go to the EC2 tab and launch a virtual machine, a Linux machine, and install Jupyter on there, configure it. It's, it's a headache. Once you get through all the steps, it works fine. You can do it that way and it gives you full flexibility of the instance and everything like that. But the guys over at Amazon, they created a new service late last year called SageMaker. And SageMaker is their machine learning platform. Where is it? It's down here. Ah. So SageMaker allows you to create a notebook instance that's fully managed and abstracts all of the headache and extra work that you have to do to get a notebook instance started. Here is a SageMaker console. It's designed for machine learning, so it has all these different things for data scientists, but the first and foremost thing that they offer for data scientists is a notebook instance dedicated for Jupyter notebooks. So you can just click with a few buttons to create a new notebook instance. Rather than spinning up a Linux virtual machine that's like as if you're going to the store, buying a new computer, bringing it home, powering it on, installing the software, setting it up right, and then finally it's working, they kind of do all of that for you. They just ask you to give it a name, choose how powerful of an instance you want. If you're just starting off, go with the, the lightest instance. It's a T2 medium. There are some caveats doing it this way. If you do it the longer way where you get full control over the machine by going over to EC2 tab and spinning up a new instance, then you can make an instance that's even lighter and cheaper than the lowest option here. So what do I mean by that? I'll go over to the EC2 tab. I'll try to launch a new ist instance here. I'll just pick the default operating system. And here we see all the different um, sizes of the machine. And so you can go something as small as a T2 Nano or T2 Micro, which is just one CPU core with one gigabyte of, of RAM. So not very powerful. But you know, if you're just starting off and you're just testing, that's perfectly fine. But the big kicker is that this is completely free. As long as you don't have any other EC2 instances running, this is your first one, then this is going to be completely free, covered by AWS. You can run your Jupyter Notebook on here if you start it up yourself and configure it yourself. And you won't pay a dime, which is freaking awesome. But if you want to skip all that hassle and headache, then you can choose to use SageMaker to manage your notebook instance for you. Now the cost is going to be there, but it's not much. So the lowest instance that you can select is a T2 medium, and I'll just show you real quick. T2 medium costs. And we'll go to Amazon EC2 pricing. And this is going to be an uh, We'll actually go to T2 instances here. Here we go. So a T2 medium is going to cost four cents an hour while it's on, or a total of $33 a month if you're having it on 24 7, which if you're not going to be coding 24-7 for an entire month straight. Don't leave it on all the time. It's not really necessary. Um, if you are doing some development work that requires continuous processing, then spin up a different machine that's meant for that purpose, not your development machine. You want your development machine to be very specific to only be on when you're writing your code, you, so you can reboot it at will, you can mess around with it, and it's not going to mess up any of your other processing workflow. Uh, and so in that regard, Four cents an hour is pennies, you know, and just turn it on when you're developing, turn it off when you're done. It's just like your computer at home. If you do, do turn it off when you're done, I, I personally don't, but turn it on when you're coding, turn it off when you're done, and you'll be fine. So let's just call this tutorial. I'll just select T2 medium. Now the role here, by default, when you create any new 
service or resource within AWS. It doesn't have access to any other services or resources in AWS. That's for security purposes. You don't want to accidentally create a function or a machine that's going to start terrorizing the rest of your entire infrastructure. That would be poor planning. So by default, you create a new system or environment, or create a new resource. It has no access to anything, but you give it access to specific things as needed. So we can go ahead and create a new role. Call it um, anything you want. As for, actually, we'll give it access to any of these S3 buckets. If you're not sure what any of this means, just ask. The default option is just none. If you're not going to be connecting this to your file storage, then you don't need to give it access to file storage. And we'll click done with that. So it's making a new temporary access role for this specific instance, which means that this instance is only going to have access to what you specify in this role, which by right now is nothing. We don't want to give this instance access to anything else in AWS apart from the internet. So we can connect to it and start downloading files or playing with Python, you name it. VPC, if you don't have a VPC already set up, just skip this. If you're not sure what VPC is and you would like to know, uh, ask me in the comments and I'll explain more about that. Same thing with lifecycle configurations. This is all optional extra stuff. Right now the goal is to just get a notebook, Jupyter Notebook instance running as quick as possible. So we'll just leave all that blank and we can come back and configure it later as needed. We don't need to name it anything like this. That's already fine. And we just click create. So just like that, AWS is handling spinning up your machine, configuring it, it's using a Docker container that already has Jupyter installed and configured with the proper security. Nobody else can access it unless they're logged into this AWS account. If you want to give access to other AWS accounts, that's just as easy. It's just in the role that that instance is using. And, and that's it. It only takes about a minute to spin up. And then once it's on, you can just connect to it. I already have mine running right here. So I'll just go ahead and click open. And it takes you right to your Jupyter Notebook. So just to do that much, the traditional way would take many steps and a lot of configuration. Gotta configure certificates, make a password, this and that. And that's all so that you can connect to it over the web properly, safely, and securely. But you know, a managed service handles all that for you. And so that's it. I'll keep this short and sweet. If you have any other questions on how to configure this even further and make it work with you with all the other AWS services, feel free to ask in the comments and I'll make a more detailed video on that. Thanks for watching.